Love and greetings to you, my dear one, in the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome once again to our morning broadcast. My name is Samo Kimaru, pastor in Uhai Center Church, Kiambu. It is a joy to have you join up with us. We are looking at altar building, and this is part five of building altars. Let me give you a summary of what you've said so far. Altars are physical things that are raised from where sacrifices were offered. While altars were physical in the Old Testament, they are spiritual in the New Testament. Altars are gateway to the spirit world. They boost people's spirituality. They affect and influence lives. While people build physical things, there are certain steps when they take, they transfer and activate power on those altars. And so far, we've looked at four things that if you do, or if they are done on your behalf, then you activate the power of those altars. They are the following. Number one, bowing to an altar. Number two, making sacrifices of any kind to an altar. Number three, covenanting with an altar or simply vowing to an altar. Number four, feasts, rituals, and ceremonies that are associated with an altar. Today we want to look at number five, which is the final one, and which is very important, which is blood shed. Blood shed. Now the word of the Lord reminds us time and again that life is in the blood. And every time blood is shed, a life is lost. In order for altars to be alive, blood has to be shed. For those of us who are born again Christians, our altar is powered and fueled by the blood of Jesus Christ. That is why we partake of the table of the Lord. And Jesus said that we do this as often as we meet. They, these are the words of Jesus. When he held the cup at the table, he declared, This is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many for the remission of their sins. By observing this as often as we do, then we empower, we activate, we remember the power by which the altar that we serve is powered by the Lord. And it's important for you as a born-again Christian to always be able to understand the place of the blood of Jesus Christ in our faith. The Bible says, without shedding of blood, there is no remission, there is no forgiveness of sins. That is what opened the door for us. At the cross, he proclaimed and said, it is finished, it is over. And at that point, no other blood was supposed to be shed. All the Levitical priesthood who was slaughtering blood at the temple, their job came to an abrupt end. For those of you who have interest in Christian history, you understand Jesus died around 30 AD. In the 70 AD, the temple where the sacrifices were offered was destroyed. And this was the hand of God. What God was saying, from now, there is no more shedding of blood in a spiritual way. It is over. The blood of Jesus seals the covenant. And each of us as a Christian, we must always remember that. Now in the practice of our faith, you find there are other altars, and sometimes we are invited to be partakers of those altars. I have classified them into three for the sake of our sharing, but they could be more than this. Let's look at them. Number one, demonic altars. That word demonic means unclean spirit. So there are many other altars you find that are altars that are unclean. They are lifted and they operate on unclean spirit. And it is possible to be a Christian and yet you are invited to participate in an unclean altar. So this is what happens. If you mix up on the two altars, mix up the altar of Christ and unclean altar, the power of God, the Holy Spirit, moves away from your life. 
Remember, the spirit of Christ is a gentle spirit. And he will never condone any mixture. That's why the Bible says to us, be holy as I am holy. That word holy means have no mixture, have no compromise, even as I am holy. Demonic altars are fueled by human blood. This happens on unique cases where people offer human beings as sacrifice. And don't be cheated, brothers and sisters. There are still people today who offer others as human sacrifices in order for them to be successful in life. There are families that are known to kill their firstborn in order for them to acquire riches. In Africa, before many people can acquire leadership, presidency, prime minister, you hear some of their children have to die or people closely associated with them die or even sections of society have to die. It may not have happened to people very close to you, but this is a reality. It's not just an accident. Sometimes these are human sacrifices that are offered. And when this happens, it lifts demonic altars in a family, in a person's life, and sometimes even in a whole region. God prohibited offering of human sacrifices. It was done by other nations that surrounded the nation of Israel, but for the people of God, God told them, thou shall not offer human sacrifice. And that is why when Abraham went to offer Isaac, God could not have allowed him to offer Isaac as a burnt offering because he knew that would become a pattern and many people would offer their children. Let me show you a time when the, um, the Moabites offered a human sacrifice when they were in war. 2 Kings chapter 3 and verse number 27. Now these guys were involved in war with the nation of Israel and they knew if they were going to do something in the spirit, they were going to overcome. And this is what the Bible says in verse 27. Then he took his eldest son, who would have reigned in his place, and offered him as a burnt offering upon the wall. And there was great indignation against Israel. So they departed from him and returned to their own land. Now look at this. This king was almost losing the war to the nation of Israel. But then he knew, in order for me to release victory against my enemies, I can sacrifice my son. I would rather lose him and win this war. Did it work? Yes, it worked. The Bible says after the son was offered as a sacrifice, there was a great indignation against the nation of Israel. And so they departed. They won the war, but they lost a son. They activated demonic altars. And this is one of the areas I want you as a Christian to know because there is a lot of shedding of human blood today to strengthen unknown altars. Sometimes not known to you, but known to those who are offering sacrifices. If a society sheds innocent blood, it activates demonic altars, including some of the post-election violence we have seen in our country and in sections of society, they are not innocent things. This is blood that activates altars in our lives. And usually what follows, there are calamities. Innocent blood that is shed in a spiritual way attracts evil and calamity on a section of society. And that is why those of us who are born again we must avoid, we must hate anything that would lead to bloodshed in order for people to acquire power. Why would, would that happen? It is because people understand everything begins in the spirit world. In order for them to rule, they know blood has to be shed. And that is why this morning we rise up against every demonic altar in our nation, in our region, and we declare we are not coming under those demonic altars in the name of Jesus Christ. 
and any person or section of people that has been shedding blood either to get into power or to retain power we assist you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ and we declare the blood of Jesus Christ is what covers our nation is what covers our people is what covers our property is what covers our investment in the name of Jesus Christ and if you're there dear one and you are listening to me refuse to compromise your faith refuse anyone to kill in order for you to acquire anything not even wealth not even power or an office whatever God wants to give you he will surely give you my Bible tells me that promotion does not come from the east or from the west promotion comes from above it is God who promotes it is God who increases it is God who strengthens refuse blood to be shed in order for you to be successful in the name of Jesus Christ secondly traditional and cultural altars now this is an area where we must be very careful because even though we are born again we have become sons of God we are members of the heavenly kingdom we time and again are invited to traditional feasts and most of the time they, they are also raising altars and there is blood that has been shed and I want you to listen to me very good when you became a Christian the Bible says you are of this world you are in this world I beg your pardon but you are not of this world your citizenship is in heaven Christ has become your altar and the blood of Jesus Christ is what gives you authority and power but there are times when we are invited to these cultural and traditional feasts and ceremonies and we can tell that there are altars that are there now this is what happened animal blood is shed and this is what strengthens the altars if you participate if you believe in them if you get involved in those altars then the altar of Jesus Christ has no more power over your life let me explain myself well if you are born again you are other a pastor you are other a bishop you are other a vicar he is the one who covers you spiritually a priest in the nation of Israel would release a blessing upon God's people every year he would speak something like this may the Lord watch over you may the peace of God keep you and he would put the name of God upon the faces of the nation of Israel but when the people went to other altars those words have no more power over God's people if you are a member of Uhai Center I cover you on the virtue of our Christian connection the moment you connect to another altar by the blood of animals then the word I speak to you they have no power over your life and that is why as a Christian you must be very careful to determine if blood is shed as a sacrifice and not just as food I don't want you to be suspicious I don't want you to be fearful I want you to be wise that when we meet in our families I am not saying we shouldn't do a slaughter I am not saying we shouldn't eat and feast and make merry no I am talking about we must not allow blood to be shed as an altar blood let me help you here this morning I want to give you guidelines on how you can determine if a slaughter is an altar's blood that it's not innocent one is if the animal to be slaughtered has specific qualities if the animal whether it is an organ or a lamb or a goat if there are specific qualities that are insisted on then you can tell this is not innocent meat it is sacrificial meat for example the nation of Israel when they were to offer sacrifices they were to make sure that the lamb was without blemish and it was to be a firstborn now all of this was a picture of Jesus Christ who John said behold the Lamb of God who has taken away the sins of the world 
Today, if you go for any slaughter and people insist that the lamb has to be specific qualities, then raise your antennas that this could be a suck, uh, this could be blood that is going to an altar. Secondly, if there are specific people who slaughter, generally in a family, the leader of that house and the friend would be the one to come and do the slaughter. But when it's an altar slaughter, then there are certain people in the village. Sometimes they are priests, they are elders, they are respected men, sometimes not even born again, and these are the ones who come to slaughter. And when they slaughter, they have to face a certain direction. For those of you who come from the Mount Kenya region, they have to face Mount Kenya. Those of you who are coming from Moranga, they have to face where Mokorwe Wanyagathanga is. I don't know about other tribes, but every time you find a slaughter is being done by specific individuals, then raise your spiritual antennas. These could be offered to an idol. Number three, there are specific body parts that are to be eaten by specific, by specific people and in a special way. It's not just meat. It's not just food. It is food that is sacrificed and to be eaten by certain people. When that happens, then you get to know that this is not innocent. Four, if there is sprinkling of blood on people all on the surface. Now, if you find that after you slaughter, some of the blood is going to be sprinkled and there are times the blood is going to be taken on the graves of departed people. Sometimes they are going to be saying, this is for those who, have, who are departed. Now, as a Christian, you need to understand that this is an issue that should be rejected. I faced this challenge one of the time. I lost my father a while ago. And after that, my sister got very ill. It was just a coincidence. And when we were troubled on what to do, someone came and gave us an advert. We need to slaughter a goat and take some of the meat to the grave of my late father and also sprinkle the blood on the grave and my sister was going to be well. While that looked to be very innocent, as a spiritual man, I knew he wanted to initiate us and our family into demonic altars. And this is where most of us are get flat-footed. Every time you have a challenge, you are going to, to attract people who come to initiate you to other altars. Reject, refuse in the name of Jesus Christ. And finally, is if the meat is going to be accompanied by alcoholic drinks or traditional brew. And they insist, even if you don't take alcohol, this is a special one. If you find these things happening in a family, then you as a Christian stand your ground. Don't allow yourself to be initiated into worship of other altars. Reject it in the name of Jesus Christ. The question maybe we could be asking ourselves, why is blood used in traditional altars? Several reasons when they are seeking for forgiveness. Now, when families have differences, most of the time, they are going to insist not only about eating together, but they are going to insist on slaughtering a lamb. Now, listen to this. I'm not against families eating together. I am against any kind of slaughter that is given to the spirit world as a way of seeking for forgiveness. Hebrews chapter 10 and verse number 4. For it is not possible that the blood of bulls and goats could take away sins. If you are a father and your son sins against you, you have a right to offer forgiveness to him. And after forgiveness, then there can be restitution. If he wants to bless you with meat, then he can do it. He can slaughter, but there should be no insistence that a bull, a goat, a sheep must be slaughtered for forgiveness to be offered. If you are a Christian, you must remember forgiveness comes to us by the blood of Jesus Christ 
and only by that blood. First John chapter 1 and verse number 7. The Bible says, if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sins. When there are differences in a family, we need to call unto the blood of Jesus Christ that cleanses our sins and stop making demands that so and so must come and slaughter. Are you hearing this? And those of you who are parents, stop insisting that your son must come and slaughter for you because of a mistake they made. When you do that, you activate another altar. That blood is not innocent blood. You are claiming that the blood of Jesus cannot offer forgiveness. Those of us who are Christian, we must insist the blood of Jesus is our only token. Any other shed blood must be to provide food full stop. Number two is when people want to make peace. When people want to make peace. Again, they are going to slaughter. And after the slaughter, you are going to hear people making peace. This reminds me, when there was truth uh, in southern Sudan, and they slaughtered very many animals. After every so many meters, a bull was slaughtered. And they offered sacrifices, trying to connect several tribes that were in war. That sowed a seed. That... Uh, that empowered an altar in that country. It didn't take long before the then president Garang was killed. And then after that, war broke out. Because peace can never be brought by the blood of animals. Christ is our peace. I say again, Christ is our peace. The Bible calls him the prince of peace. If we want peace in our families, we must bring Christ. If we want peace in our society, we must bring Christ. He is our token of peace. But this is what happens. In pursuit of peace, people keep away from Christ and they want to go into bloodshed. They slaughter bulls, they, sl they slaughter goats, and they ask people to make covenant out of that. They have activated other altars. And generations pay for that. There are sections of our society and even African nations that are still at war even today. How comes every time people mix up the altars, the altar of Christ is covered and has no more power to affect the people and the regions? Sadly, people shed blood hoping to join two families to become one. And this happens a lot when people are getting married. It's a Pharisee, brothers and sisters, that the two people are joined weeks before a wedding happens. And this happens when they shed certain blood. Among the Kikuyus, there is a certain lamb that must be slaughtered to join the two families together. Among the Kabas, there is a certain uh, goat that is also slaughtered. And that blood is what is used to join the two families. And therefore, by the time the couple is walking down the aisle in the house of God, they've already been joined together by another altar. By the time the pastor or the leveret is pronouncing them a husband and wife, in the spirit, another altar had already pronounced them. They are walking to the church altar days and sometimes even months after this has happened. And therefore, the pronouncement and the blessing of the minister is of no effect. It is null and void. And that is why we must even keenly look at some of the blood we shed when we are doing negotiations in our marriages. I am a strong advocate that when we do these feasts, we only go for meat. But we should not look at blood as a way of joining our families together. Two families are joined by love. And the, and the covenant that is made public, the vows that we make, is what joins two people together. 
anything else, brothers and sisters, we activate altars, thinking that we are being joined together, but in our spirit, we already have been joined by other altars. And that is why, friends, you find there are troubles that will come. When you are joined to another family through another altar, then you also receive the spirit and the evils of that other family. And that is why this morning I want to declare no joining by any other blood should happen in your life. If you are born again, washed by the blood of Jesus Christ, you are supposed to be joined to your spouse by the love that exists between the two of you and by God himself. I want to remind you, marriages were begun by God. It is God who said, a man shall leave his... I am very sorry for the interruption that happened. Please consider this to be a continuation of the message that we have been doing. We are looking at how blood has been used in joining two families together. When two people come together, a man and a woman, a husband and wife, that joining is in the order of God. And we must make sure that we are joined through the covenant that we have in Christ. Marriages were begun by the Lord and we must not allow traditional and cultural altars to have the final say over our marriages. Every time you allow a covenant to be done under another altar, then you say that you are going to be influenced and affected in your marriage by that altar. And that is why I say to you this morning, may the Lord deliver you and may you also take steps and take your family back into the house of God. Finally, our altars that are raised when we kill fathers, whether they are physical fathers or spiritual fathers, if we do that, we elevate a throne from where demons and Satan himself comes to affect our lives. Let me give you an example. Cain killed one of the fathers of the faith, Abel. And by doing this, he elevated an, an altar of evil and attracted the judgment of God in his life. And up to today, the Cain generation and influence is still living on the face of the earth. God said, whoever kills Cain shall be avenged. Right now today, there are many altars that have been elevated in our families because we have killed. In fact, if you are to study and find out how many people have been killed in Kenya as a result of, as a result of elimination, so, so that someone else can enjoy what they have that just tells you why we have so much evil happening and affecting us today. Revelation chapter 2 and verse number 13. This is one of the churches that was in Pagamos. And this is what the Lord says. I know your works and where you dwell, where Satan's throne is. <laughs> Let me make a comment. This was a city, but in that city, there was a throne, and the Saturn and Saturn was sitting on that throne. Yet in the same city, there was a church that was operating. If that ministry is going to have a great effect, it had to raise its altar and dethrone the altar of Satan in order for them to be successful. And I say to each one of you, brothers and sisters, especially those of us involved in ministry, we must be aware that there are cities towns that are inhabited by satan and the thrones of satan are elevated so if you are going to be successful then you must first bring down the throne of satan or elevate your altar higher above the altars of the enemy how did this happen i continue reading by the word of god and you hold fast to my name and do not deny my faith even in the days of antipas who was my faithful Mateo, who was killed among you where Saturn dwells. The name Antipas means a father. So God had raised a father in Pagamos, but the people conspired against him and they killed him. What they did not know is that by killing a father, they created a vacuum and demons 
came, elevated the throne, and Satan was invited into that throne. I want you to know, brothers and sisters, if we kill fathers, we empower the throne of Satan. When we kill even physical fathers, we activate the influence of Satan in our lives. Whether we are rich or we are poor, you can do a study of every family that killed their father, whether uncle, whether auntie, either they had challenges about love, challenges about wealth, and they thought of eliminating one of them in order for them to inherit a piece of blood or some wealth. They inherited that, but then they also created a throne for Satan to rule in their families. Dear one in the Lord, I want you to know this morning that these things are real. And that is why those of us who are ministers and pastors, we must be very careful to make sure that we elevate the altar of Jesus Christ above every other altar. The word of God says, let God arise. What that means is, may the altar of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, be elevated above every other altar. That means we must not fear to stand for our faith. Even if you are rejected by your people, even if the whole of your region rejects you, you must not fear. Joseph was rejected by his brother, but God used him to save them much, much later. When God brings light into your heart, you must stand and defend that light. Let your light shine. Let your light bring let your light shine in every darkness in your family, in your region, and do not compromise. Don't want to be like them. Don't bow to their God. God will use you to bring light later on. And this is what I want to encourage you. If you have known the Lord, do not serve in any other altar. It may take a decade, it may take generations before they come bowing before you. They did the same for Joseph. They hated him. They sold him out. But Joseph was a non-compromiser. I am persuaded, brothers and sisters, that this morning the Lord wants you to be a non-compromiser on matters of faith. God wants you to be one who stands out, an overcomer in the name of the Lord. And that is why when there are altars, you reject those altars and you stand on the sure world, the word of the Lord. Thank you for listening to me. Let me remind you the five things that activate and empower physical things to become altars. Number one is when you bow down. Number two, when you offer a sacrifice. Number three, when you make a covenant. Number four, when you get involved in feasts, rituals, and ceremonies. And finally, is when you shed blood or when you allow blood to be shed on your behalf, whether human blood or animal blood. Those five things, don't do them. And if you have been participating in any of them, you don't need to give money to be forgiven. It is for free. All you need to do is to go before the Lord, the Lord in brokenness. And if you feel that you are bowed, then you may want to pray that the Lord will send deliverance your way in the name of Jesus Christ. And this morning, I want to pray for you that God is going to be elevated in your life, that the covenant of God is going to be more powerful than any other covenant that may even have been initiated by your forefathers. May the Lord bless you. Thanks a lot for listening and for taking this word. I pray it's going to enlighten you and put you to a place of searching your heart. Father, in the name of Jesus, I'm lifting my listener before you. Lord, you know their lives, and you know the authors that may have been speaking and operating in their lives, and sometimes influencing them, even making the altar of Christ of no effect. And this morning, I unveil, this morning, I uncover, this morning I activate the altar of God in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. I'm lifting a prayer of repentance, O oh Father, 
if there be any bowing to other altars, if there be any sacrifice to other altars, if there be any covenanting to other altars, if there be any feasts, rituals, and ceremonies to other altars, if there be shedding of blood to other altars, Lord Jesus, hear and answer the cries of your people. Yes, I bless you this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that the Lord will lift you up. I pray that the Lord will raise you up. I pray the Lord is going to seal your heart. I pray for wisdom. I pray for knowledge. I pray that God will give you boldness and courage to confront the altars in your life. To confront the altars that have been affecting you and your family in the name of Jesus Christ. And this morning, Lord, we pray that the blood of Jesus will speak in our favor. Yes, I cover you this morning. I bring a covering of God upon you and upon your lives and upon your children and upon your property. Everything that you have, I release the blessings of God upon you in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And I bless you. I pray for wisdom. I pray for understanding. May the great hand of God be upon you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I would want to hear how this message is blessing your heart. My name is Samo Kimaro. My number is 0722282892. You can WhatsApp me and that is going to be a blessing to us. You can also email kimaropriest at yahoo.com and that is going to, to uh, help us to keep growing and to keep working. May the Lord bless you once again. I want to encourage you. You can share this message with people you believe could benefit and that way you have partnered with me. I have an aim of reaching at least 10,000 people every morning. I want to ask you, be one of my partners. Pass this message. Let many people be enlightened and let us win this battle. And I bless you this morning. I commend you to God and to the word of his grace which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all those who are sanctified. In Jesus' name, amen and amen.